Hello and welcome to this Dungeon Fog tutorial. We're going to be looking at the text tool as well as the map decorations tool. These go hand in hand with one another and are incredibly powerful in customizing and making your map look even better. When we look at the text tool, that's this tab here, we will see that we have a lot of information that we can work through. The color of the font, the alignment of the font, whether it is centered, left justified or right justified, the font family, the font variant, whether it's regular bold italics, depending on the font you choose, and of course the font size. We then have a blank box where we can type in whatever we like. So let's say old tomb. And now when I move my cursor over my canvas, we'll see that the text old tomb is being presented. We have rotation, which controls the rotation of our text. We have the option to make the text bordered or not. At the moment, it has a black border around it. If I deselect border, it will no longer have a border around it. I quite like the border, but I don't like it that thick. I'm going to reduce it down to one. So it's just got a slight edging around it, which will help separate it from the room. Then once I've placed the text, let's say there, old tomb, it is being illuminated by the lights within the room and currently is functioning almost like a prop, which means we also have access to a lot of tools that we are familiar with by now. If I select the text, you will notice in the text tab that automatically opens up when we have selected text text that I can mirror it if we want to make a puzzle for our characters to try and figure through in either direction of course I can add a drop shadow to give it a little bit more definition that doesn't look too bad actually I can turn it into a map decoration we'll come back to this in a little bit I can make it over the walls so that I could drag it so that it's not sitting exactly in the room bearing in mind it will be affected by those light sources so that looks a little bit strange to my eye personally so I'm going to deselect above the walls I can also make it need a key or be concealed or trapped. This would be if the text was actually in the space, if it was physically in the chamber. Ancient text inscribed across a doorway, for example. You could add all of the usual options to that text to give yourself some information as to what's going on. And then I have the snap to grid options that as I select that, the text will sit directly on the grid if I want perfect alignment with other text and so on. I'm going to deselect that as well. So that is the basic functioning of the text. However, there are more tools to the text tool than first meets the eye. If I delete this text for now, each room that we currently have within our map, let me just go to the stack so that you can see it better in terms of the stage, is currently unnamed. That's my bad. If I select each room, I now have the option of giving it a label. So let's say label one, and let's say the room is the crypt. Notice it has created a number in the bottom corner of the room and that I now have the font controls for that particular label. I could of course also type in number one crypt and it will add it automatically to that token if I wanted it to be that way. I don't want it to be that way. I want that just to be the room number so that my players can see the room number but I get other information. So for now, I'm going to leave that as it is. If I simply left click on this number, I can move it anywhere I so choose within my map. And I quite like to have them in the top left hand corner of each room. I don't know why. That's me personally. This is a corridor and I'm not sure it actually needs any labeling aside from a corridor. I don't think it needs an actual room number. That's entirely up to you. This definitely needs a room number. We're going to make that room number two and we're going to say the grave of the warrior. Let's say again, I'm not changing any values. I'm simply working my way through it. These are not needed to be labeled. They are rooms, but they are the trap mechanisms, basically. And then finally, this room needs to be labeled, and that would be room number three. And this room we're going to say is the um, steps of the mother, as I believe that was the original intention of this room. Now, um, Notice that the font size has changed. We just need to make sure that we keep everything the same. So Viking Norse font size 12. Select the token. We change it to Viking Norse. And I believe it was font size 12. Uh, is that correct? Let's just select that token again. Yep, font size 12. So that's fine. And then I'm just going to move that up to there. 
Okay, so what does that really do for us in terms of, let's call this the stairwell, in terms of our text tool, what does that actually do for us? Well, what it does is it allows us to create a legend on the side of the map. Uh, maybe we'll create our legend here. To create the legend, we create a standard piece of text by using the text button. And instead of adding in text here, we delete that. And now we use the option collect all room names. So I left click on that and it will automatically collect all of the room names that I have created within Dungeon Fog. All of the rooms that I have labeled. Notice that there are two rooms, I suspect that's the trap rooms, that are not yet labeled. Well, that kind of makes sense because I didn't label them. Now all I do is left click and I have a legend of all of the different rooms and the numbers that pertain to that particular room. Now I can select this text by left clicking on it, selecting the unnamed rooms. I don't think that looks very neat. As well as I'm not convinced the font size is right. So let's change this down to, let's say, font size 18. That will make it a little bit neater. Then I can place this, say, down here. Let's see, somewhere down here, because it's information that I might need. Or I could duplicate it using the standard duplication functions. Control D would allow me to place the text there as well, so I can keep track of what's going on. I'm going to delete that, however, for simplicity's sake. The important thing to bear in mind is that this doesn't look like it's popping very well. And if I were to add text specifically to a room, let's call this the uh, crypt. Again, although it does read quite well, it's not doing what I wanted to do. I want it to look like a room label. To do that, we now need to change to map decoration mode. And the way that we do that is we simply select the text, in this case, crypt. And I select now from my options, map decoration. And that allows me to transform it into a map decoration. It's no longer affected by the lighting within that room. Again, if I select this larger piece of text, I can now convert that into a map decoration. And it is no longer affected by the ambient light levels of the stage. It now literally jumps out at us. Why is this important? Well, let's finish making these text overlays looking even better. To do that, we're going to use a new set of props that have been added to Dungeon Fog, known as map decorations. We find those under the Place Props tab. We will open that up, and we'll see here map decorations. We have compass roses, beautiful, beautiful compass roses that we can add to our maps. We can, of course, use Shift, Control, and Scroll to decrease the size, just holding the Shift and Scroll to change the rotation. We can add in whatever compass roses we like. This one's quite nice, I think. Let's place that there. For now, we're going to come back to it. We've got corners that we can add to our map so that they do definitely look like some hand-drawn map that's been laid out on a table, if we really wanted to include that, for example. We've got all kinds of other things, decoration elements. These are little um, corner pieces just to make it look more hand-drawn. Very nice. We've got framing options that we can add in this detailing. Now, of course, the important thing to bear in mind is that these can also just become props if we want them to, but they have been preset as map decoration. We have distance measures that we can apply to our map. So if our characters are looking for some specific distancing information, we could put down the scales. But most importantly, when it comes to text, we have plaques and banners. Now, if I were to place down this parchment, let's just rotate it, holding down the shift key and using my scroll wheel on my mouse and then holding down shift control to shrink the object down, I can now place that on the map as well. It creates quite a nice little a legend holder, if you will, or if I want, I can even create a banner, which I can now place here and hide my text with. We're going to look at why that happened shortly. So I'm going back to the select tool option now. Now, every single map decoration within Dungeon Fog has been preloaded with the map decoration tab automatically activated. The reason for this is because it is map decoration and that's what you want to use it for. It follows the same stacking requirements as we would get for any of the props within Dungeon Fog itself. So this banner 
banner sits within this room. We can see here this unnamed is actually the text. So if I left click and drag the text above the banner, the text will now appear above the banner. It follows the normal rules. However, map decoration objects sit above standard objects. They are almost acting as if they are above the walls, except they don't receive any lighting information either. If I were to select the text here, I can move that onto this banner. It will disappear because it is underneath. I can hold down the shift comma key to move that text to the top of the stack straight away. That's working quite well. And now holding down control and scroll wheel, I can zoom in and I can see that I've got some problems with my font in terms of not fitting on my legend. If I want the legend to be a little bit wider. I can hold down control shift and scroll again to get that text to fit. I think I'd rather have the text being slightly smaller. Let's make that 14, for example, that will now fit. And perhaps I don't want the stairwell or the corridor, so I can delete that too. And I'm not entirely sure the white reads very well. So let's change that to a dark brown and see how that works uh, for us. Mm, it's okay. I think the border might be causing problems now. There we go. If I deselect the border and I make this text a little bit darker, there we are. Maybe the text itself needs to change in terms of the font that I have uh, selected. And we can work through all of these and find the ones that we particularly like, as well as the ones that fit within the space that we have allocated ourselves. I would suggest always going with a bold font as it makes it very easy for players to be able to read. If you want the players to read it, now of course I can come in here and press enter and go above and say the tomb of Saint Georgie. And that font is really, really not great for the, what I'm trying to demonstrate here. But that's the point. You will find fonts that you particularly like or dislike. These are great for annotations. Let's um, work through that. Very um, atmospheric, that one. There we go. We'll go with this one for now. And I have as much control over those, that text oops, as I uh, would like to have. What is important is once you have added in all of these text options and played around with all of the text that you have available to you, it is then critical to realize that perhaps whilst you might want the crypt and the banner to be visible to the players, you don't want the legend to be visible to the players. You don't want them to know what's in room one, but you do, for example. Well, then you need to play around with your map decoration settings. And the reason is when it comes to export. When we go to export, you will notice that the map appears, but without any of the room decoration. Why is that? Well, the reason for that is that it is hidden by default. We can then show map decorations and that now activates the legend. So if I were to export this particular map, we would have all of this information present that I would use perhaps for myself. But if I was exporting it for my players, they don't need that legend as they're still exploring this particular map. I do, however. So I can turn on show map decorations and I turn on show GM information and that will give me all of the secret trapped doors, the concealed doors, as well as the room numbers, plus the legend. If I don't want the legend, if I just want the room numbers so that the players can keep track, that's absolutely fine as well. I have all of these options that I can turn on and off as easily as flicking a switch. And that is how you use the new text and map decorations tool in Dungeon Fog.